Hi guys and welcome back to the Roaming Taster. The tour consisted of visiting a spice farm, prison island and stone town. We drove for around 30 minutes or so until we stopped to pick up Ziad, who would be our tour guide for the duration of the day. Our first stop for the day was a spice farm called Jumbo Spice Farm. Ziad gave us an introduction about what the tour would consist of and introduced us to Ali, who would be assisting him throughout the tour. Cardamom, cinnamon, ginger and others you are going to see at the sides. You can have like a quiz. You need just uh, to smell and uh, sometimes just to test and then you can just tell me what kind of spice uh, the spice is. Ooh, okay. <laughs> We got to see and taste how the different spices are grown and how they look before they get to us, which is usually in their powdered form. Some of the spices which we tasted were turmeric, clove, cinnamon, green pepper before it gets to black pepper, and nutmeg. We also saw different types of fruit, like the red banana, star fruit, custard fruit, and some plantains. Ali did a demonstration of how this fruit, called the lipstick fruit, is used by women for decorative purposes. The fruit itself is not eaten at all, but the people simply use it for its bright red color. We also met a man selling soaps and perfumes made from the local spices and fruits. As vanilla is my absolute favorite smell, we bought a vanilla scented soap bar. We produce this. This is a Ylang Ylang soap. This is Mr. Butterfly, and you can understand why he calls himself that after you see what he can do. He climbs the coconut tree with absolute expertise and incredibly fast. Once he got to the top, he shouted down to us so that we can experience how high he had climbed. He was extremely skilled and climbed the tree multiple times a day for all the people who come to visit oh. the farm. When he was done with his climb, he gave each of us a fresh coconut which he skillfully carved for us to drink the coconut water. This was very refreshing on a hot day. Also, the ring slash hand chain which I am wearing was handcrafted by Ali as we were walking around the farm. Once we were done with the coconut water tasting, we stopped to try some fruit and here we got to taste some melons, grapefruit and the red bananas which we saw early on the tree. We also had the opportunity to purchase some of the ground spices before leaving the spice farm and all these sales will support the local community. After we left the spice farm, we drove for around 20 to 30 minutes through the town, which was extremely busy with traffic, in order to get to the port which was at the edge of the town.
Once we got to the port, we were dropped off and had to make our way to the boats. We had to walk past a few stalls to get to the boat, which was going to take us to our next destination. Eventually, we found the boat and got on board and made the 20 minute journey to Prison Island, which is also known as Changu Island. Once we got to Prison Island, we had to walk along the sand and climb a few stairs to make it to the entrance. We made our way to the reception area where Ziad got us our entrance tickets and then we proceeded to walk around the island. Ziad gave us a bit of history about why it is called Prison Island. He explained to us that it was a place where slaves were sent to be kept. And when there were no more slaves, people who were required to quarantine were sent to this island in order to isolate from the general population. One of the former prison quarters is now being used as a restaurant, so if you do have the time, you can enjoy a meal there.
Prison Island is also famous for the giant tortoises which call it home. The tortoises were gifts and have since grown to around 50 or so. They are very old with some being over 100 years of age. They gave us some letters at the entrance and we were allowed to feed and pet the tortoises. Just be careful of your fingers because they can bite you especially when you are feeding them. The branch of a tree just fell down oh. because there was a there was a wind here. Are you hungry? Okay, you can take it. Here you are. Are you hungry? And then it was back to the boat to make our way to the port which also happens to be the edge of Stonetown which was our final destination for the day. Stone Town is the former main town of the island and is brimming with history. The island does have a newer town though called Zanzibar Town now. We started our Stone Town tour by making our way to the old fort which was filled with little shops selling clothing and trinkets. The old fort also has an amphitheater where festivals are held regularly. We made our way through the grounds of the fort and went to the narrow streets of Stone Town. If it is your first time, it is definitely advisable to go to Stone Town with a tour guide, as Stone Town is made up of many alleyways and narrow streets, with some of these streets being dead ends, and it tends to become very confusing if it is your first time. As Tanzanite is the jewel of Tanzania, you will find a lot of Tanzanite jewelry stores around Stone Town. We also passed Freddie Mercury's former home, which has now been turned into a museum. We stopped at Africa House for a quick lunch, which consisted of 
a traditional octopus curry and ugali which is a staple in Zanzibar cuisine. The service and views at this restaurant were great and I would definitely recommend you try them out when you visit. After refueling, we began making our way through the streets and learning more about the history. We were shown two types of doors. The doors which were circular in shape on the top indicated that the owners were Indian and were usually spice traders, whilst the rectangular doors which often had chain symbols along the door frame depicted that those owners were Arabs and slave owners. As the majority of the population in Zanzibar is Muslim, there are a lot of mosques around, but a small percentage of the population are Christian and Hindu in faith. So we saw a Catholic church in Stonetown. However, it is only open when they conduct services. This is the so-called center of Stonetown, and as you can see, it is a mix of shops and people's homes. We then made our way to the Darajani market where you can find literally anything from fresh fruit and vegetables to meat, poultry and seafood. The market is always a buzz and you have to carefully navigate yourself through the stalls, the people and the snow. After the market, we made our way to Swahili House to go to the rooftop and take in the aerial views of Stone Town. We did not have a lot of time to spend here, but if you do, it is a lovely chill spot to hang out. We also requested Ziad to show us the Hindu temple in Stone Town, to which he happily obliged. Unfortunately, the temple is only open to the public during service times, but the keeper let us in to have a look around. One of the foods which we were eager to try was the Zanzibar pizza, and we were told that it was only made at the Foradani night market. This market is situated at the Foradani gardens, hence the name, many people warn that you must negotiate the prices prior to ordering at the market as they usually try to overcharge you and even our guide cautioned us about this before we entered the market. As we did not have much time left and a long drive back to our resort, we stopped at the stall and ordered two Zanzibar pizzas. The pizza is basically a flat bread stuffed with some fillings consisting of onion, tomato, cheese and egg and fried with some oil. It was really yummy and a must try if you get the chance. We also purchased some drinks and one that we never saw before was the Schweppes Novida, which is a pineapple non-alcoholic malted drink. Basically it tasted like Fanta pineapple and was really nice. If you enjoyed the video, please make sure to give it a like and if you're not already, please subscribe to see more videos from me. Thanks for watching. Until next time, see you soon.